Those two losses kind of set the tone where we were at in the season. It made us know that, all right, we got to win out if we want to make history. And to get to that playoff standpoint, it's just one game at a time. Now it's more of we're all one, we're family. You got to understand that the only way we're going to be able to get this done is if we do it together. We lost those two games. Those are important to win the conference. We want to go to the playoffs every year. It made a lot of people get more serious about the game and, you know, take practice seriously and prepare better every week. You know, not every team can go undefeated. Right, that's just the reality of it. You know, the best teams in the FBS don't go undefeated most of the time, right? It happens. But if anything, I even told the guys after the loss, whether it be the position group, we talked about it, the team, we all talked about it. I mean, man, there's only one or two options. We either stay down or get back up. Western Carolina backs against the wall. Must win here on out if they want to go to the playoffs. You'd love to have your, your best players. But you know what we have done is we found a lot of young players have stepped in and done a really good role. Western Carolina, they've still got playoff hopes, but all of a sudden they're banged up. So something's got to give today. The game plan was really just play our brand of football. Um, nothing special, just do what we do and do it to the best of our abilities. Um, Coach Bell was preaching all week to just be aggressive and dominant. We are going to be a dominant football team from this point on. When you enter that game and you're on that sideline, be dominant today. You want to play? Show me your dominance today. One play at a time, as dominant as you can do it. Everybody understand that? Richard McCollum set to boot it away on a beautiful 69 degree day. Jordan Davis at the Terrier strike first. We have nothing to lose for every game. So I think that we got Walker's best guy there. Fade to the end zone and a touchdown. As the game went on, we kind of found a groove and we started playing like we were supposed to play. Western Carolina on top. Let's come back to work tomorrow, ready to go. Everybody got it? Yes, sir. We'll talk about it tomorrow. Love you, man. Live on the earth. What's up? Well, you know, we are, like I tell our coaches, um, you know, we're here and our ability to keep this job is not only putting a winner on the football field, but also in the community, making sure our kids are, are great ambassadors for our university. But really the number one thing it starts to think about, we call it student athletes. They are students here at the university and we got to make sure that they graduate. So with forestry, with my particular interest in forestry, right, I want to work in like timber investments, like more of the financial and business side of the woods. You know, I kind of joke, people always ask me like, you know, there's no money in forestry or they say that. I'm like, dude, it's like, it's like Wall Street in the woods, man. There's money everywhere, right? Like money does grow on trees in a sense. 
The Natural Resource Conservation and Management Senior Capstone Project requires students to perform a natural resource conservation assessment for a parcel of land. This year we're working at Eagle Mountain, which is owned by the Eastern Band of Cherokee Indians, and they would like a bit more information about um, kind of the current conditions of the property and how it might be managed into the future in a sustainable way. Um, uh, so right now, my group and I, we're just uh, doing some data analysis, so gather up all of our uh, final data for the presentation here in about a month. Um, right now, we're just looking at some maps that we've made uh, throughout the process and um, kind of reaching our final goals, just doing everything we can to reach it in the meantime. What Capstone and what this degree has set me up to do is really just learn the basis of like, you know, what, what am I looking at in the woods? Like how, and not to be funny, but how can we turn this into a profit? You know, um, kind of be business minded, but also, you know, maintaining like sustainability in the environment. It's not always easy. I can think any student athlete, whether it be here or, you know, the biggest school we can think of, the smallest school we can think of, like everybody's busy, man. You know, almost like a piece of advice to anybody, just be like, don't get overwhelmed with the schedule. You know, um, for me personally, how I manage my time, would be just like consistency. But if you have that consistency, the time you go to bed, the time you wake up, uh, the time that you need for yourself, you know, like when you're gonna eat, you know, you can kind of sculpt the rest of your schedule around that. I've been here four years. It's my fourth year, my senior year this year. Um, I actually didn't play football until my junior year of high school. When I was a little kid, I had a a bad knee injury and I couldn't play football from about the time I was eight or nine to junior year of high school and uh, one thing the doctor told me I couldn't do was play football again and so I kind of started from square one um, couldn't really run I had to relearn those processes uh, those movements um, I didn't have like incredible strength in my my one leg so I had to like build that up and so the best fit at the time um, for me to play the game I wanted to play junior year was to be a long snapper. And then from there, you know, I just fell in love with the game, being around with teammates in high school, and it got me here. You know, special teams is one third uh, of the uh, game. It's actually the biggest uh, change in yardage in football. So, I mean, uh, it's very important. The difference is uh, we only get one down. You know, special teams, you know, uh, block punt, we'll flip a game. And, uh, uh, you know, kickoff return for a touchdown, we'll flip a game completely. Uh, so you got those highly explosive uh, uh, plays that can completely change the outcome of the game in about 10 seconds. Walk off field goal or overtime. Yeah, now both teams are done with timeouts and there won't be any icing of the kicker. This one is going to be right in the middle of the field. And it's going to be a 33-yard attempt. The snap is good, the hole is good, the kick is up, and the Catamounts win it. The Catamounts win it at the buzzer, 20-17 to 17 on a 33-yard field goal from Richard McCullum here. That game actually gave me a taste that an important game can't come down to a field goal. So this whole mindset was just grinding in on those very pressure situations. You know, just making myself ready, what to think, how to feel, um, just feeling calm. You know, if we're at home, whether it be a Tuesday practice or if we're gonna go away on uh, the Friday or Saturday for a game, whenever I get to the field, I'm like, hey, you know, I just imagine like if it's a, a snap that has to get a punt off to win the game, like that's what I gotta do. If it's a, you know, if we're, we win by 70 and it's just gotta be good extra points all day, that's what I gotta do. So I just think about it, like visualize it in my head. All right, so to work on accuracy, us as a unit, uh, at least once a week, we get on the sideline, we line up with the live snap, pull, uh, Last snap will kick, and we aim for that small full goal post right by kick for the cast. If we can make this, we can make literally any kick known to mankind. I'm making it in the little goal post on the wall. Let's go, baby. Let's go. 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 Let
Best operation around, man. Best operation around. I can do that, too. I can do that, too. I think the specialist on every team around the country is the most closest group. We're a really close group. Um, it's nice kind of having a little smaller group. I think total is on the team. We only have uh, six guys in our position group. This is a chance to get really close. We have a lot of special teams dinners and stuff at the house and just hang out um, outside of that. So we're a really close group of guys. All right, so tonight uh, we're gonna have some fellowship with the specialists. Uh, it's steak night, and we try to do this once a week and eat at the bar that me, Paxson, and my other roommate, Clay Bardall, had built this summer. Uh, we got the grill over there, and uh, here's where we have a good time, and uh, we just like to talk about how the week is going and just have a good time. Yeah. 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 Just to meet these guys and you know, just to do it with those guys, uh, it's it's a really fun time. Yeah. Kobe, he's a good guy, man. You know, he's real down to earth. You know, he's a man of God. Obviously, you know, he talks to us the day before the game, before we, while we eat dinner, you know, and uh, with uh, pregame speeches, you know. I always ask Colby uh, before a speech, you know, you got a good one for us tonight. He's like, yeah, man, of course I got a good one for you. You know, I, I, I very seldom have ever let players just get up every week and speak, and I, I have let him do that the last two years because I think the guys really respect him and the message that he brings on a Friday night before a game. We do it after team dinners, whether we're at home or away. I try to keep it short, five to 10 minutes, but sometimes I get carried away. <laughs> Maybe 15 minutes, you know, you never know. All right, guys, I'm gonna keep it short tonight. I'll tell you, the last two weeks we've been going through a fire. We got hit in the mouth. All we can say is good, let's get back up. Right, because who we are as a team has been revealed. We're a brotherhood. We go down together and we go up together. It's nothing new for us. These next two weeks are our championships. It's nothing new for us. We've been here before. All season long, we've been playing high intensity games. It's nothing new for us these next two weeks. And it starts tomorrow. Everything we've done since January comes down to these two games. And I'm telling you, listen to me right here, it all comes down to tomorrow, but it's nothing new for us. So here's my question tonight for y'all. Is this season over? Is this season over? Is this season over? Do y'all want it to be over? Is this season over? We're just getting started. It's nothing new for us, y'all. Let's get it tomorrow. We have a rivalry matchup on tap for you today as ETSU travels down the road. Free Gonzalez fires deep to White and puts it on a touchdown, Western Carolina. Gonzalez back to the air. It's Lee again, and he's got it again. This time for six. Adams back with Gonzalez. He'll take the pitch. Adams cuts it back in, and the first time they convert on third and zone. Gonzalez looking deep. This time he's got his tight end, it's Ballinger. Oh, he eat to the air out of the timeout, has his tight end, touchdown Western Carolina. Throws it to Adams, Adams makes a man miss, dives, and he's in. That's number five, which equals a season high. Fires got his man, it's white for the second time. This afternoon, touchdown Catamounts. 
Western Carolina ready to celebrate as they have now won back-to-back -back games in the Blue Ridge border battle.